Shalom. First off, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And to all my brothers out here preaching is true. To you I say, Shalom. This is Amatazah from the Chicago camp coming back at you again with another lesson entitled, Born That Way. So, I ran across this short, okay? And this short is of Joe Rogan interviewing Matt Walsh. And Joe Rogan asked the question, why would God make people of the alphabet lifestyle? So when I first ran across it, I was like, nah, that's too deep. I'm not even going to touch that. But I came back and, and I'm actually excited about it because, you know what, this truth is only for the elect anyway, okay? So whoever is supposed to hear it will get it. And everybody else listening, hey, if, if it's not for you, it's not meant for you to get it, you won't get it. It'll go right over your head, okay? So I decided that I will go ahead and tackle <laughs> this subject because um, it's 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 not a straight answer. I mean, I could tell you it's a straight answer, but you got to prove all things through the scripture, right? So now, there is a video that I do have on this channel. It's called Ungodly ABCs and 123s, all right? So in that video, you have an Israelite girl, okay, who transitioned, okay, based off of the school system. The school system allowed her or basically took her out of her parents' home. And then she went through the transition. And at the end of the story, she unalived herself on the railroad tracks. Now, understanding and being quickened in this truth, you understand that ultimately that was a judgment of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And the reason why it was a judgment is because the issues of death belong to the Lord. Okay? There's no there's nobody out here dying happenstance. All right? The Lord dictates and, and controls the issues of death. So I would say go to that particular video and you can get a background on it. All right? And then watch this video. So just stop right now. Go to that video. Get a little bit of of understanding the background, then come back to this. This video right here, okay, there's a subject that needs to be talked about in order for you to understand the question that Joe Rogan asked, okay? Because it deals with regener regeneration or what we call reincarnation as well, all right? So there's three things that you have to understand, three primary things that you have to understand before we get into this subject. Number one, the Lord hates sinners. All right. Number two, reincarnation is actually a thing. And it's all throughout the scriptures. And number three, when we talk about the vile affection, all right, which is the alphabet lifestyle. In the book of Romans, okay, the scripture explains that it comes from idolatry. That means that the Lord turned out the light. It says their foolish heart was darkened. So they, they would do those things that are not convenient. Okay. So this particular guy that you see on the screen, he looks to be Issachar or Ephraim. He's not on the highways and byways, okay? He's got a booty face, all right? And um, <clears throat> he's, not, uh, he's not in the chief place of concourse. What, what am I saying? I'm saying that he's not quickened. And so he's going to try to answer the question, all right? And it's not, he's not going to hit the mark, okay? Because he's answering the question with the wisdom of men and with the precepts, with precepts that 
are taught by men, all right, and not by um, the spirit and the power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, so he's gonna try to answer the question. All right, let's let's take a look at the video. I have an answer for you. God make people gay in the first place? Well, of course I would say it comes from God. If I didn't believe that, then I wouldn't be Christian. Why would God make people gay? Uh, I have an answer for you. From the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. So clearly, God, and through the words of Jesus Christ, made it clear that you are not to satisfy fleshly desires. Unfortunately, we are born into a world of iniquity full of people who convince you that what you're doing is okay and convince you that homosexuality is okay when in actuality, it isn't God that makes you that way. It's the world. Okay, he said clearly. I'm going to run it back. Okay, because the scriptures that he's reciting, Galatians, the fifth chapter, Paul is talking to the Galatians, okay, who are Israelites, all right? And the Galatians were bewitched because they stopped operating in the spirit and they let some people who crept in unawares, all right, and let them to basically lead them back towards the law. So Paul was rebuking the, the Galatians, all right? And when you get to the fifth chapter of Galatians, he's admonishing or exhorting, or exhorting them, all right, to walk in the spirit. Okay? That's not the answer to Joe Rogan's question. The question is why would the Lord or why would God allow people to be born of the alphabet lifestyle? Okay? So Galatians 5 is just a, an admonishment to walk in the spirit, all right, so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, okay? That, that's not answering the question. So today we're going to answer the question, all right, in the spirit and the power of Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. That's what we plan to do right now. I'm going to play it one more time, and then we're going to jump in. God make people gay in the first place? Well, of course I would say it comes from God. If I didn't believe that, then I wouldn't be Christian. Why would God make people gay? Uh, I have an answer for you. From the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. So clearly, God, and through the words of Jesus Christ, made it clear that you are not to satisfy fleshly desires. Unfortunately, we are born into a world of iniquity full of people who convince you that what you're doing is okay and convince you that homosexuality is okay when in actuality, it isn't God that makes you that way. It's the world. All right. So we're going to get some scriptures. All right. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to prove everything through the scriptures. All right. Because in actuality, that lifestyle is actually judgment. Okay. Now. <clears throat> as I so like it, as I said before, there's three things you gotta understand. Number one, so in this life or in this system, you have um, Esau, right? And Esau is through his pseudoscience is trying to convince the world that you're born that way, all right? And he'll say some crazy like your pituitary gland if it's a quarter of an inch longer than someone else's then that boom now you're you, alphabet okay and people will run with that because they don't know all right um so what they'll say is their argument or justification behind it is <coughs> salakia <coughs> their justification behind it well hey you know, I was born this way. Therefore, since I was born this way, um, the Lord wouldn't allow me to be this way if he didn't love me. See, that's the justification. Hang on one second. <clears throat> All right. 
that shellac on the back. All right. So, yeah. So, anyway, we're going to find out that, uh, you know, the Lord has punishment and destruction set up for uh, sinners. Also, uh, the alphabet lifestyle is an abomination according to the scripture. All right. Number two, uh, we talked about reincarnation. All right. Then all throughout the Bible. And it is a real thing. All right. The scripture says there's nothing new under the sun. And we're going to figure out exactly what that means. People take that to mean, um, you know, as far as uh, no nothing new is as far as uh, the way people think and the way people act and this, that and the other. But uh, it's a little deeper than that. All right. Also, we're going to talk about the place under the sun. All right. Which happens to be the place of judgment. What we're going to find out also in this uh, uh, lesson is that um, every third and fourth generation, your spirit comes back onto the earth. All right. So this is not our first time here. OK. All right. And then um, we'll get into uh, Romans, the first chapter, and we'll go into this idolatry and the vile affections. All right. We'll talk about that as well. So just from the onset, I'm going to let you know this uh, lesson is going to be at least two parts. So I'm going to keep an eye on the clock. I don't want this video to get longer than, I'd say, 25 minutes, maybe. All right. So here comes the disclaimer. OK, first and foremost, this information is not for everyone. Because the scriptures are not for everyone. I know everybody got a Bible in them, in their house, all right? <laughs> but that doesn't mean anything. It wasn't for you, okay? It's not for everyone, all right? Um, it, the, the scriptures are for the children of Israel. I'm going to show you. This Deuteronomy 4 and 5, okay? This is Moses talking to the children of Israel. OK, so I'm about to go through my disclaimer scriptures, the disclaimer scriptures that I'm going to bring out. Basically, it lets you know from the from the jump. If you're not of the elect, this ain't for you. Deuteronomy four, five through eight. It says, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahweh, my power commanded me that ye should do so in the land, whether you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who have the Most High so nigh unto them, as Yahweh our power is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day. You hear that? All these scripture was given to Israel in the sight of the nations so that the other nations will say, what nation is it that's so great that have all these judgments and laws? All right. <laughs> now, some of these judgments is going to go past a carnal mind's understanding. OK, reincarnation and coming back upon the earth and being punished for a previous life is a judgment. OK, the Lord is incredible and amazing in his his scripture and his word. He didn't give it to everybody. All right. Now, this. This this word and this, this is our heritage. This is who we are. But because of the curses, all right, we were discontinued from our, our heritage. We were discontinued from these secrets, from these judgments and these statutes and this understanding. But now we're coming back unto our power. All right. And in the place of our captivity, we are remembering ourselves and we're calling upon his name. Now, let's go to 2 Ezra, the 12th chapter. All right. And we're going to look at 36. 
and we're gonna go through 38. All right, so this <clears throat> this is in reference to Esdras. Okay. All right, so let's take a look. Verse 36, thou only has been meet to know this secret of the highest. Therefore, write all these things that thou hast seen in a book and hide them and teach them to the wise of the people whose hearts thou knowest may comprehend and keep these secrets. So Ezra was told that him only right, has been good to know the secrets of the highest. He says, write it in a book and hide it. How is it hidden in the book? Because there's, there's seals on the book. There's spiritual seals on the book, all right? And so the understanding is not going to be opened up to just everybody. It says, teach them to the wise of the people whose hearts thou knowest may comprehend and keep these secrets. All right. So now that means that the audience is a select audience. Who's the audience? Deuteronomy, the 29th chapter. Okay. This is verse 29. And it reads, the secret things belong unto Yahweh, our power. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. All right. So here's another disclaimer of scripture that's telling you that the secret things belong to us and our children, that we may do all the words of this law. So it's not for everybody. Psalms. 147, <clears throat> Psalms 147 and 19. You don't believe me? Let's see what the scripture says. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yahweh. You have not known the judgments of the Lord. You have not understood, all right, that this earth is the place of judgment. There is no hell with burning, burning throughout eternity, okay? You don't know the judgments of the Lord because it wasn't given to you to know in the first place. It was given to us. Let's look at this note. Psalms 105 and 6. O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is Yahweh, our power. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Okay. So his judgments are in the earth for a thousand generations. All right. So this is for a certain group of people. Okay. Last scripture in my disclaimers. I have disclaimers because I wanted to be clear on why you don't understand. Okay. And it's also a disclaimer for those <laughs> who do understand. So now you know why you understand. If you've, you're under the sound of my voice and you do understand, now you know why you understand. Because no man cometh to the Son except the Father draw. John 6 and 44. Amos 3 and 7. It says, Surely Yahweh power will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Okay? All right. Now, with that being said, I didn't hit my disclaimer scriptures as to why this information, all right, may seem strange, all right, and it because it ain't for you, it ain't for everybody. So now we got we about to tackle, all right, some of this information. Now, number one, we said that the Lord hates sinners, right? Now you hear uh, you hear people talk all the time and say that 
uh, the Lord loves sinners. He just hates to sin. Well, where's that at? <laughs> where's that at in the Bible? Let's see what let's see what what uh, what the Bible actually says. <laughs> this is wisdom of Solomon. All right, fourteen and nine. Huh. This was one of those books that was taken out. Mm, okay. Um, for the verse nine, for the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto the most high. Let me read it again. For the ungodly and his ungodliness, okay, sin and sinners, right, are both alike hateful unto the most high. All right. That's cut number one. Let's go to Sirach 12 and 6. Let's see if the Most High hates sinners. And it reads, verse 6, For the Most High hated sinners, and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly, and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. Okay? So the Lord hates sinners, and he's holding them for the might, the mighty day of their punishment. All right. So that will be cut number uh, two. The Lord does hate sinners. Let's see what I got for the note. Isaiah 13 and nine. It reads, behold, the day of Yahweh cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy who? The sinners thereof out of it. All right, that'll be cut number three. All right, and let's go to uh, Sirach. Let's go back while we're in there already. Let's go to 15. Sirach 15 and 13. And it reads, it says, The Lord hateth all abomination, and they that fear the Most High love it not. Okay, so those who fear... All right. Fear the Lord. They hate the abominations, too. What's the abomination? Let's go to Leviticus. Uh, Leviticus 18 and 22. Mm. Leviticus 18 and 22 reads, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination okay all right so there you have it all right you have one two three four five scriptures all right that's allowing you to understand all right that the lord ain't dealing with sinners all right and he's not dealing with an abominable lifestyle all right and the alphabet lifestyle is an abomination that's what the scripture says all right, so now there is a, a movie called uh, The Lion King. Now, The Lion King, everybody knows the story of The Lion King, but if, you, um, if you're quickened and you look at The Lion King, you see that that's our story. All right, you have Mufasa, all right, who was the king, and you had Simba, all right, who was his seed to inherit the kingdom, all right, and then you had Scar, right? The evil brother, okay, which would be likened unto Esau. He was the accuser of the brethren. Who was the brethren? Simba. Okay, Simba was accused of killing his father, right? And he didn't, but that's how he had to get him banished, right? He got him banished from the kingdom, all right? And then what did uh, Scar do? Run that, run the fucking kingdom down. That's what he did, all right? Now, when Simba, who is just like Jake, all right, when he is discontinued from his heritage, he out here in the in the in the in the jungle with wild warthogs and meerkats, and he eating all kind of abominable things, things that he would never eat. Okay, grubs and all kind of nasty insects. Okay, this is a lion. He wasn't made to eat that. But he, he, he is. He's eating it. And they had a philosophy called Hakuna Matata. 
which means no worries, problem-free philosophy, okay? No, no worries for the rest of your days, all right? Do nothing, just do whatever you want, okay? That's that do as uh, thou wilt. And now, one of the things is, is that Esau's reasoning is that same, you only live once, okay? You only live once, which would be akin to a kuna matata, all right? So Esau has his own reasoning. Now, when I say Esau, I'm talking about the general, um, Esau in general. Uh, the Lord gives us insight through the wisdom of Solomon, okay, on how Esau thinks. All right. And, and guess what? He don't think that he's going to burn for eternity for his sins or for any wrong he commits. All right. That was added by the Catholic Church later on, that hell doctrine. So let's look at Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter, and let's see what Esau says or what he thinks about life and life after death which is completely contrary to our faith, okay? Now, Wisdom of Solomon 2, all right? And we're going to start at verse 1. And it reads, For the ungodly said, reasoning with him themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. For we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. For the breath in our nostrils is as smoke, and a little spark in the moving of our heart, which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes, and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air, and our name shall be forgotten in time, and no man shall have our works in remembrance, and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud, and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. That's how Esau believes, okay, when it comes to the reincarnation, okay? He's got the true YOLO, you only live once, reasoning, okay? Let's see what I have for this note. This is Psalms 10 and 13. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn the Most High? He have said in his heart, thou will not require it. See? So Esau is thinking that he don't have to pay, okay, for the sins that he does in his lifetime. Okay? Now, in that reasoning, there is no hell doctrine. In that reasoning, all you have is them just uh, <laughs> disappearing. <laughs> there is no man coming back. Okay? It says, so that no man cometh again. All right. That's what he's saying. All right. Now. On the flip side. No, before I get to the flip side, let's look at Sirach 8 and 11. Because this is important as well. Uh, it's not Sirach. I'm sorry. Sirach is Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. And it reads, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do wicked. All right. So in other words, whether it's Esau or just wicked Jake, if if he's not uh, getting dealt with when he does something, he doesn't think that there's actual punishment involved. OK, so because of that, it says that his heart is fully set to do evil. All right. But the Lord. He'll get you in the next life. He doesn't have to get you in this life. He can, he can repay you real big in the next life. 
Let's see what I got for the note for this. This is Nahum 1 and 2. The Most High is jealous. It says, and Yahweh revengeth. Yahweh revengeth and is furious. Yahweh will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yahweh is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. Yahweh hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. And in the clouds are the dust of his feet. Okay. All right. So there you have Nahum uh, 1, 2, and 3. It says that the Lord will revenge. Okay. So you got Psalms 83, the confederacy is led by Esau, Edom. They in, they, in, they confederate against the Lord. They enemies of the Lord. They will be uh, uh, revenged. The Lord will have revenge or vengeance on them. It's as simple as that. All right. It says, because sentence against the evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the Most High, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, and neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before the Most High. All right. So there it is. Now, I want to what I want to do is close on. Um, I want to go uh, second Maccabees. All right. I'm at the, I'm past the 30 minute mark. So I want to go to second Maccabees and I want to end on this. Second Maccabees, the seventh chapter. Now, um, here's another reason why the Apocrypha was taken out of the scriptures. OK, because. A lot of these cuts, you're seeing all these cuts uh, in this lesson. There's a lot of cuts coming from uh, the Apocrypha. Now, in 2 Mac Maccabees, the seventh chapter, you have the woman that had seven sons. All right. And you had King Antiochus, the Edomite Greek. All right. He was the king and he was forcing the children of Israel. All right. Basically to call themselves Gentiles. All right. They, that's why that's why when you go into the New Testament. All right. And as soon as you get into uh, the New Testament, now you're hearing Gentiles. Those are Israelites. OK. They couldn't be they couldn't call themselves Jews at all during this Greek captivity. All right. And then they were forced to basically um, eat swine. They couldn't have a you couldn't have a Bible in your house. If you had a Bible in your house, they you had the scriptures in your house, they kill you. OK, if you circumcised your kids, they kill you. So basically everything. All right. Um, to try to worship everything you did to try to worship. All right. The father. All right. You basically will be killed. That's what that's who this man really is. That's who he really is. The, the most basis and the most wicked, the most profane person on the earth. All right. So and and, and, and some of these, uh, you know, some of Jake think that they can still eat pork. And or any other unclean food, you think the Lord going to let these these seven boys die the, the, the way they died so you can eat pork. So this is second Maccabees, the seventh chapter. Now, this is just an example of. Of, of our faith. Okay. So the mother, she's about to watch all of her children. All right. These seven boys get mutilated and burned in a, in a big frying pan in front of her. This is a uh, second Maccabees seven and 22. I cannot tell how ye came into my womb for I neither gave you breath nor life. Neither was it. I that formed the members of every one of you. But doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again as ye now regard not your own lives for his law's sake. OK, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson. I'm here at the I'm approaching the 35 minute mark. Um, I'll see you on the other side. Lord willing. Abba Ratazah. I pray that this uh, lesson was out of fun. To the next one, Shalom.